Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. We are going to present the emergency response plans of chemical spillage at offshore by Phoenix Oil and Gas Group. This emergency response plan was completed by seven of us and today, me, Nur Shatira Binti Kamarwah, will be presented this detail of emergency response plan with two of my friends who is Nurin Hasha Binti Muhammad Nasir and Chin Min Hu. The ERP can be defined as continual process of monitoring and analyzing risk to develop awareness and to ensure early action can be taken. Chemical spillage statistics according to International Tanker Owners Pollution Federation Limited, frequency of oil spill from tanker has continued to decrease over the last five decades. However, one large spill and two medium spill were reported uh, last year, which is in 2019. And the biggest um, incident of chemical spillage happened uh, is deep water horizon oil spill, which occurred in 2010. There are three levels of emergency. Level 1 is minor, which is involved minor incidents and minimal damage that can control within the company. Level 2 is serious emergency, which is involved death and control by the site emergency response procedure. Level, the last level is level 3, is a major emergency. This emergency uh, need government and external support to control, which involve complex major damage and multiple fatalities. Okay, basically the objective of our emergency response plans are to deal with the major emergency by providing the guidelines and to make sure everyone able to make correct decisions in order to deal with the emergency accidents. And furthermore, the ERP, also known as emergency response plans, also can promote safety awareness among the workers and prevent the company or the offshore, offshore platform having lots of damages and make sure company able to operate normally after the accident and to maintain the good reputation for the company. Let's proceed to the emergency response plans. Okay, before constructing the ERP, there are 10 things need to do to make sure the ERP can handle the future incident efficiently. Number one is to establish performance objective. Objective can make sure the plan is on the track and accountable. Objective must be quantifiable and tangible. Number two is to construct an emergency response team where the team need to include from the top management and employee. The, the participant of the team also need voluntarily. Number three is to conduct a risk assessment. The purpose of the risk assessment is to identify potential vulnerabilities and weakness of the physical assets, system and the environment. The health risk of employee also need to assess. Number four is identify response resource. Response resource include people, system and equipment. The resource need to be availability and capability uh, to stabilize the situation during the incidents. Number five is design accurate egress plan and evacuation route. For example, red signs that lead to stair and doorway need to obviously show so that it can help emergency service to notify best way to enter and exit the building. Number six is create an emergency communication plan. So the purpose of the plan is to give an instruction to personnel on how to evacuate and relocate to assembly points. So there are two types of the communication which are internal such as uh, text or voice message and also the external such as through discussion with the media and provide status information to key clients and stakeholders. Next is internal personnel need to train and educate to stay up to date the latest emergency protocols. Besides, trainee help the personnel perform their duty effectively during the incident. Trainee programs such as handling the hazmat, first aid, and etc. Number eight, to ensure the emergency response plan is going smooth smoothly throughout the incident happen, the responsibility and roles need to distribute among the personnel. It also avoid miscommunication during emergency occur. Moreover, the written policy is constructed based on size and scope of the ERP plan. Lastly, to make sure the limitation and defect of plan is fixed, practice and review is done every six months. It is also to ensure that uh, ERP keeps on update and familiar among the employee. Now, let's look at the emergency response plan for during the accident. First is the emergency alert procedure, in which the person who recognizes the danger should pull the fire alarm and call the ambulance. Next, 
to contact the security in order to inform any important message. Don't to, not to forget, notify the neighboring company to make sure they are aware about the emergency accident. Second is the investigation and reporting. So in order to report uh, emergency response plan during, it have to investigate the root cause of the accident and implement any recovery measure that able. During the investigation also, emergency response team will work with the competent body such as BOMBA and APA, including any competent person of any sector such as chemist to determine the type and amount of product result and release from the equipment or vessel that are leaking and split. Okay, third, we will continue about the emergency response cleanup. The emergency response team during the accident should remain at the scene until the accident that have been cleaned up is under control, in which we can say that the contaminated soil that is disposed on the on-site should be placed in the contaminated soil bin because it is hazardous. And then anything such as used sorbent material should be disposed also in a hazardous waste bin. Then, not to forget, the collected spill waste also need to be disposed in a used or recycling container. And all those cleanup activity will be documented after. And not to forget, make sure the personal protective equipment are always readily available to be used during the accidents in emergency. So always alert the occupant and supervisor to evacuate immediately from facing any danger ahead and to warn everyone immediately and ventilate the area to ensure that our air if a volatile and flammable liquid is spilled. Next is the emergency action and immediate spill response. First is to make sure that the appropriate PPEs is available for the specific emergency response procedure. And next to ensure that there are proper respiratory protection and the self-contained breathing apparatus as CBA is extremely vital for each emergency response procedure. If respiratory protection is needed and there are no trained personnel available, please call for public safety department in order to get help immediately and just ensure that the spilled salt must be used to protect the nearby floor drain and absorbent must be poured from the outside of the split to the center. And next, if the spill is large and uncontrollable, so it is uh, out of control and cannot be controlled by the emergency response team, please ensure it have been informed to the public safety department to lend the help towards the offshore area. And the contaminating of split area with compatible disinfect and a spilled pad. It's very important to control any microbiological organism from being spreading around. And then after cleaning the spirit shortly, contact the Environmental Health and Safety Department to refill the spirit kit and report the spill to the supervisor, which be able them to make a report soon. Done during the accidents, now we were going to move on to the emergency response plan after the accidents. The first and foremost, which is to ensure the accident is notified to any related body. So what is the related body? It might consist of Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency, MMEA, Petroleum Industry of Malaysia, Mutual Aid Group, PIMMAG, and Department of Environmental DOE. Next is the announcement for informing the community at where the company the Phoenix Oil and Gas Group should send a person to notify the community at the nearest radius of the accident verbally so that the community will be able to understand the message being lent to them. And then to make sure that they are aware and able to cooperate well in responding to the comments ordered by the Phoenix Oil and Gas Group and not to forget to reduce the panic among the community. Besides, we have to make a record and documentation at where any action taken during the incident must be recorded as documentation 
to be referenced in the further future use and it have to be in a form of hard copy and soft copy. Next is the procedure for resuming normal operation is that the company should set up a special committee in order to access the condition of the affected to area the with a continual observations okay, and monitoring. set up a special <laughs> committee in order to assess the conditions of the affected area in order to measure the affected area is free from hazard which might put employee to the risk. Then again, we need to review the loss after the accident. Um, for example, actually we need to um, set up a committee in order to and review the compensation and the damages of the companies after the accidental spill happened. Then furthermore, um, we also need to review the health status of the involved attendants in order to make sure they are safe and healthy after the accident. Okay, for example, um, we need to collect the health information of the employee by make sure they are having medical checkup and if they have any health problems we need to provide the treatment and follow-up care to them then again on um, the recognizance observation and continuous monitoring in order to prevent the occurrence of other accidents by listing out all the possible accidents and make sure all the employee are prepare for the worst scenario. Then later, review the causes of accidents and effectiveness of the existing measures and also our re emergency response plan in order for the continual improvement. Okay, then lastly, we go to the conclusion. Okay.